learns, he'll just know, okay, that guy's not going to be open, or this is going to come open, and he'll just know when to get the ball away. Wobbly pass down the field. It finds the open receiver, Sam Bubonics. Led the team in receptions last year at 34, and he gives the Flyers a first down across midfield. It, it, it's not how that play was drawn up, I guarantee you. Just a great job on the scramble drill by these wideouts, and that was about as wounded of a duck as you could throw. <laughs> but hey, doesn't go in the score sheet as that. It goes down <laughs> as a completion that kept the chains moving. So again, Dayton, you're making something happen, but then right there, that, that's a, you have a dangerous wide out, Luke Brenner, fastest on the team. So you gotta get him the ball. Get it into his hands So for Cassiola, make that pass. That's something that you look at the past few quarterbacks that Dayton has had, if there's been any issues with their game, they don't always hit the easier throws as well. Going back to, to Alex Jeske, uh, they can hit all the throws down the field, but in those little simple slip screens, they don't always hit those as, as frequently. Good pull, good blocking on the outside by Willits. Nice nice play, picked up six yards. Good job by Cassiola there. It's just such a danger with his feet, and that gives you so many options as a quarterback to be able to make things happen both with your arm and your feet. Well, in, in the next step on this, so they keep bringing off the Kentucky State is who I'm talking about here. They keep bringing Owens off the edge, number 87. He's going after Chisholm all, all the way. Okay, There's, He's not even reading the, the mesh whatsoever. Kentucky State has been bringing down Trevon Pope. The next step on that is for Dayton to have the outside receiver or whatever it is to come in behind the, the area that Pope vacates and have Cassiola just flick him the ball, and that'll be a big play. Third down, he avoids the sack, putting his head down and getting the first down on third down and three. Jared, in week one against Robert Morris, Dayton was 0 for 12 on third down, still won the game. Last week, 6 for 15, and they're on a third and manageable. They get the first down on the feet of Cassiola. In watching Cassiola on these third down plays, you wouldn't really realize he's a young player because those are some savvy plays he's just made. Feeling the pressure, knowing where the sticks are, picks up the first down with his feet. The third down before that, gets a ball downfield for, for Bubonics. He's got him up the seam. And there is oh, a, ooh, drop pass. But it was a bit underthrown. It was Jake Chisholm he was looking for again. If Cassiola puts that about five yards farther, it's a walk-in touchdown. And, and that's something, as a younger player, he's got to realize. You're, you're, why are you sending Chisholm up the middle? Because the, the other routes are pulling the defenders out of the middle. It's just Chisholm with a bunch of green space behind him. Just get the ball downfield, let him go run underneath it. But you can see him kind of floating a little bit. They are going into the wind, so he's got to put a little extra on there. Uh, but that, that's a missed touchdown right there. Good read. Just got to make the connection. Yeah, absolutely. Second and ten. Right up the middle. It goes to Stilski. And he'll pick up four on the carry. Down to the 31-yard line. It's a nice little change of pace. He's not the same back as what Chisholm is, but a couple of times he's carried the ball. He, he gets up field in a hurry. Runs pretty hard. It's nice for Dayton. Dayton. You know, you always talk about it at the FBS level. Who's our running back you? Who's tight end you? You can make the argument that Dayton Flyers are, of the PFL, they're running back you. The last few guys they've had have set their career rushing record, and Chisholm is leading the country all-purpose yards the last two seasons. And now you got Stilski, who looks pretty adept himself, coming out of the backfield, making a catch on the sideline. Tackle made, pushed out of bounds by Jalen Johnson. Stilski run on second down, then a... Reception on third down. It's fourth down and four, Jared. Do you go for it here? I think you kind of go back to what you were mentioning earlier where there might not be enough time for Kentucky State based on their style of play to come back, but also factor into that that you have some good weapons in your own right. Uh, just kind of, hey, giving the nod to the offense and saying, look, we think you can pick it up. But we also think our defense can hold him. Fourth and four, steps up in the pocket, just pitches it oh. forward, and he lost the football. Jake Coleman lost the football, but Kevin Roberts was right there to fall on it. Man, and that was lucky. 
similar type of play happened against the Flyers in week one against Robert Morris. On defense, Dayton punched out the ball and Robert Morris fell on it, but this time Dayton looks to be the beneficiary of it. So nice job by Cassiola though. Steps up in the pocket. Doesn't matter how you get the ball to the receiver, as long as they can make the catch. Coleman picks up the first down. It looks like they might have marked him down. It is good for a flyer first Regardless, down. Dayton's got the ball one yard outside of the, the red zone and new set of downs. 21 yard line for the Flyers. Trying to maybe put this game on ice. Here's Chisholm looking for some room up the goes. middle of the field and he stutters his way down to the 17 yard line. And it's weird trying to say that, Jerry. And some of you listening may be thinking to yourself, why is he saying that the game could be on ice? But with 540 left in the length of this drive, 540 left in the third quarter, Dayton scores a touchdown here. Kentucky State goes down by three touchdowns. You're looking at a team that to score a touchdown generally for a drive needs six to seven minutes to march it down the field. Yep, especially the way that this Flyers defense has been playing. That's going to be longer than that. Oh, there he goes. That time Cassiola got fooled. Cassiola. Unless that was just a call. It could have been a called pull. Kept it himself and actually, because of the tackle, got a little lucky. He got tackled back to the sticks. That works out. <laughs> <laughs> back to the original line of scrimmage. If he had been dropped where he got hit originally, that would have been a loss of two or three yards. But instead, keeps the feet moving. Keeps on a drive. Attendance today, 2,682 at Welcome Stadium. Renovations still underway. You can see that's why there's nobody sitting there over on the far side of the field. Third and mid-distance. Cassiola rolling out right now, stepping up. Going to run it himself. Needs some blockers. Looking to get to the first down line. He's tackled, but he'll just get enough for a first and a yard more to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Flyers. We talk about how much Cassiola's been doing with his feet today. The thing to keep in mind, though, it, he's not a run-first quarterback. He's coming out. He's making his reads. Maybe he could have thrown a ball there, but made a smart decision, understood where the chains were. He's very composed. Uh, nice job going through progression and picking up some good positive yardage with his feet. Chisholm. Great move. In the Patience back. to the edge. Chisholm, his third touchdown of the day, and the Flyers are rolling. And you can see, as we see the replay here, uh, Chisholm, when he takes this hand up, number 40, Isaiah Clay, is right there. And Chisholm has a little sidestep, and you can see how good of a back Chisholm is. He, he doesn't need much. Give him a little sliver, and he's got breakaway speed. He can beat you to the corner. He can beat you to the end zone. Great job by Dayton. Wasn't the most orthodox of drives. <laughs> Not exactly how you draw it up. You had a, a third and 20 you picked up at one point. But all in all... The, the resolve was there. The resilience was there. The composure was there. As they start to get settled in, you see him trying for the, the second, or the, excuse me, the two-point conversion uh, was stopped by Kentucky State at the line. Um, but as, as this offensive staff gets a little bit more, uh, not, I don't say connected, but as they, you know, each game that they call, likewise with the players, you just want to get better from game to game you got a bye week to be able to go back and look at. You've got three games that aren't really similar to each other. You play a Robert Morris that is a, is a very known opponent, familiar opponent that Dayton plays every year. Very similar in terms of who they're recruiting. And then you go play Youngstown State that's in the Missouri Valley. A little bit of a step up in competition level back down to Division II. So you got a bye week coming up this next week. You're going to be able to kind of sit down and say, all right, these are areas we got to improve upon. These are areas we're already doing well. They are doing some stuff well, like I mentioned, composure. That's something stuff to teach. Okay, you either have it or you don't. So for Dayton, they've been able to, even though it's not looked pretty, it's not looked like how it's going to be written up in the, in the play sheet going into the game, they've been able to make plays. Okay, on defense, they played really well today. I mean, three points. That's awesome. That, yeah. That's a great job by by the defensive side. Uh, made a 
huge play when they needed it, and then uh, was able to keep them on the on their last drive down to just a field goal. So nice job by the defense and the offense being complementary to each other. We've got a flag on the play here, so we'll see what gets called. But for Dayton, some stuff to, to work on. But you're always going to have stuff to work on. Decent return there for Kirkland, but wait on the flag. That was a 15-play, 72-yard, 6-minute and 40-second drive for Dayton. Just matriculating the ball down the field, as they say. And, you know, the other thing, too, Jared, now as they pick up the flag, Dayton tried to go for two there, and now 0 for 3 on the season. Looking to go for two. That's a little sub storyline to keep an eye on as the season progresses. Well, and some of those, though, are, are just have to do with the math of yeah. going for two versus going for one. Okay, it puts it at four scores versus three. So some of that is, has to do with that. Against Robert Morris, uh, they got played ball knocked down, I believe, uh, on a two point try. So those are the ones, okay, that was in crunch time. He goes Conway. He's a big back. He is. Conway up for a gain of one to the middle of the field. 6'2", 245. In the first half, the, the interior of this line was able to get a pretty good push. I mean, he, he was picking up eight, nine yards on, on a rush. So Dayton, if they can kind of corral him in in the second half, that, that goes some of the production for uh, this Kentucky State team. You know, coming in the game, Ken Don Walker was the, the leading gainer. We've only said his name yeah. two or three times today. So Dayton's done a pretty good job. you got a mismatch on the bottom of your screen. If they do throw it, this is who they were able to complete the pass on was the 6'4 receiver. Jonathan Callister. Jerry just goes for a run of one to the 30-yard line. You know, and Jerry, I don't know if we talked about it, but we just got told he was getting the start about 10 minutes before the yeah. game. So. For the guy who just kind of got, I don't want to say thrown in there, but probably not going through the whole week expecting to start. He's played pretty well. And Jalen Myers, who we expected to start today, did not get the start. Jonathan Jerry instead, the senior from Lakeland, Florida, in there getting the start. But clock still ticking, Jared. Under two and a half to play. The third and very long, two and a half in the pass. third quarter. Here's a pass. Jerry out to the right, and it's overthrown. It's a good was, route. It was indeed. He was looking over there for Ladarian McAllister, the wide receiver and a graduate student out of Lakeland, Florida. And that's another, you know, people talk ad nauseum when discussing the triple option type offenses. It's not that they never practice passing plays, but when you don't, that's not your identity. When it's a situation where you need it, the it doesn't quite flow as well as teams yep. that are constantly using the pass as part of it. That's one of the things that Davidson actually does really well. They're a, a run first team, but they mix in the pass very well. Really good punt, backs up Bubonics, but he has some room to run over to the 40 yard line and he's pushed out of bounds, forced out. Yeah. And this is gonna be a penalty on, it looked like it was Stilski coming across the field with a push in the back against uh, one of the defenders right at the 40 yard line. So this is coming back. Yeah, two flags on the play. Probably both for the same infraction. Wait and see. Uh, yep, they come across the field. That's right at that spot. And that's when you can see it happening. He, he, yes, hustle over, but don't be dumb. And that's a young guy try, trying to make a play. Got to realize if you're on the punt return team, 10 yards is great. If you can get 10 yards on the punt return, that's that's the equivalent of a first down. Awesome. Anything more than that is even better. But don't make a stupid play from, from where you don't have leverage coming across the field and then back up yourselves from, from the field position you would have had. Um, so he's a younger player. It's his third college game. He'll learn. But obviously, if you're going to make the mistake at any point, when you're up 25-3, it's kind of a nice little cushion. Right over the middle of the field, a pass complete. Staying on his feet momentarily was Joey Swanson. That'll be across midfield, and a flag comes out 
after the play was complete, but a first down for the Flyers. And I'm thinking this flag's gonna go against Brandon Wade, number 27, for maybe an unnecessary roughness against uh, Hazel. You can see him at the bottom of your screen, Hazel's helmet comes flying off, so. We know that the, the head and neck area is a very protected part of the body, so anything up in that area is gonna be at risk of a flag. Maybe just a frustration penalty there to add on 15 yards to the end of the catch. And Dayton now set up perfectly at the 31 yard line. Hey, you go from uh, having your own block in the back penalty and now it's uh, <laughs> two plays later, not bad. First and 10 for the Flyers from the 31. Here's Chisholm to the left side. Oh, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Just couldn't get away from a couple of thoroughbreds up there. I missed who was on the tackle for them. I think that was the safety coming down, Trevon Pope. And Dayton, I didn't see who was blocking him, but they had a hat on him. And Pope did a good job getting away from him. But if they could have sustained that block just a little bit longer, Chisholm was going to be able to make that corner. So, so Dayton, you're close. Like Those are the things that they're going to be looking to clean up in this bye week. No hurry to snap the ball with now 10 on the play clock. Ticking down toward a minute. Cassiola, and he'll be tackled at the line of scrimmage. Good play there made by Jonathan Adams, Jr. See, and, that, and that's what I was mentioning earlier. That's where the next step of the RPO is have the outside receiver just sit down. Okay, as soon as Cassiola pulls it, looks like he's going to run. Both the defenders come up to Cassiola, just a little dink out to the to the wide out. You're going to pick up five yards. And that's something that as the offense grows, you're probably going to see those wrinkles start to happen as they get into the conference slate. You don't really want to show your hand too much in your non-conference. Save something for the, for the games that, that matter a little bit more. Cassiola passing, third down and 10. Comes over the middle of the field and nobody there to cover. Running down toward the end zone and he's in a touchdown. What a play there designed by Dayton. And it's, I believe that's Kate Beam on the touchdown. That's the uh, good old school style back. Kate, the bowling ball beam. He's, he's known for springing Chisholm, getting big blocks as a H back, but nice job. Coming across the middle, finding an opening, and you're right there, the bowling ball. <laughs> right through, getting the first college touchdown. Nice job by Cassiola, keeping his eyes downfield, finding the open man, and Beam did the rest. So not only is that his first college touchdown, is this one is knocked through by Michael Tenning, or rather Sam Webster. The, that's also the first touchdown that Cassiola has thrown this year, not to Jake Chisholm. That's it. <laughs> but he's still it's a while that you think about how many good receivers that Dayton has. And they still he still hasn't thrown one to a wide receiver. No, and that's something that again, you played some good opponents the first two games of the season, had a little bit. In last year, look back to last year. Right? I'm trying to compare the two because last year he had a first first year offensive coordinator. It took about two, three, four games before they started to settle in and find a rhythm. Similar to what's happening this year. So they're starting to find guys downfield. You know, he connected with Swanson on that drive. He's hit Bubonics a few times. Um, he's had Hazel a couple of times. So it's starting to happen. Now, going to the bye week. All right, let's take a look. Where do we need to clean up? For, for Cassiola, okay, make that read just a little bit quicker. Or, not so much to read quicker, throw the ball sooner, okay? Because sometimes he's just underthrown guys. Know it's where it's gonna open up. You got three weeks of games that you've not just lived, now you can go back and look at it on film. Understand, okay, this is where that's designed to hit. You know, is it an issue of arm strength? There's an issue of the win, regardless. Just understand, throw it a little bit sooner. You got some good receivers that are gonna create separation, like on the uh, the missed 
pass to Chisholm over the middle two drives ago. Just get it a little bit sooner, clean it up and, and film in this bye week, and then come back in this conference slate looking strong. Four plays, 70 yards, a minute and eight seconds for the Flyers, Jared. And that was a 31-yard touchdown pass. Did he keep the football? Did he keep the football there? Your first collegiate touchdown? Did he keep eh. the ball? Is it like a baseball thing? Go get the ball back? I would say, yeah, but I don't know that Dayton does that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the uh, the last football that was that was kept was uh, Robert Morris win, and I think that's getting a, a nice commemorative uh, coating that says Rick Chamberlain hundredth career victory. This one bounced around the outside. Kendon Walker. Now is Rick Chamberlain the type of guy that would put the hundred emoji on there, or is he the type of guy that would spell it out in big bold letters? <laughs> I, I, I would like to ask Coach Chamberlain if he knows what an emoji is. <laughs> that's that's uh, he's, he's the older school <laughs> as far as the emojis. I mean, myself, I just started using them maybe a year ago. So that's the end of the third quarter. We're going to go to the final 15 minutes. 32 to three right now and. We're going to take a look at how Dayton has gotten to this point today. 32 points on the board for the Flyers, a lot in the second half. I think you see Cassiola keeping the eyes up, looking downfield as he steps up, hits Chisholm, and then this Flyer receiving core is going to get downfield. They're going to block. They, they just want to score. Somebody scores, everybody scores. That's how they go. And you can see right here a uh, little bit of a muffed return. Nice job by the kickoff coverage team getting down taking, essentially exploiting a mistake by Kentucky State and making a pay, getting the safety, and then Chisholm just doing what Chisholm does best, giving a little bit of a crease, sniffs the end zone, he's going to find a way to get in, and then all the way down to Cassiola coming across, finding Beam coming across the middle, and then the bowling ball does what he does, makes some contact, falls down in the end zone, and now it's a completely different ball game than 10-3 at half. Yep. No doubt about that one, Jared. 10 to three at half, and Kentucky State now facing a big gulf, trailing by 29 points and not really doing themselves any favors. And you mentioned before their, their style of play. This is not the the score that, that they're going to come back from. Uh, not saying obviously anything can happen. It, it's that's why you play the fourth quarter. But it's not their style of play to, to be a quick strike, big play in that passing game, I, I should say, because they have the ability to do it in the running game. Dayton's just been playing really good on defense and, and keeping it corralled. But Dayton, don't lose sight. Yes, you're up 32-3, to three, but defense, keep playing the way you've been playing because they're going to be coming after you even harder. Third down and two goes for a gain of just one to Kendon Walker. And now if you're Kentucky State, I know it's fourth down. I know you're deep in your own territory. You're down by 29 points in the fourth quarter. You got to at least consider it here, Jared. And I think Kentucky State also, you're playing for the rest of your season. Okay, the first two games haven't gone the way you'd hoped. You're, you're stepping up a division to play against an FCS opponent this week, so you don't really going into that game. You don't go into the game thinking, oh, well, we're going to lose, right? You don't play a game unless you think you can win. Fourth and one, and Dayton stops it at the stop. line of scrimmage. Kentucky State can't convert on fourth down. What a job by the Dayton Flyers on fourth down, stuffing at the line of scrimmage, and that is the third time this year that they have been able to do that on fourth down. The Flyers have not allowed a fourth down conversion yet this season. And that was just a great play by, by the defensive tackle, Sam Shattuck. Uh, they tried to cut him. He jumped back, knocked down the offensive lineman, stepped across, made a huge tackle, had a little bit of help cleaning it up. Looks like the trainers are on the field for one of the officials. Hopefully he's all right. Got caught up in the, the celebration slash 
the commotion in the, in the, on the tackle. But nice job of that Dayton defensive line. They've played really well all day. A lot of plays that they've made at the line of scrimmage on that quick dive. I mean, that, that's essentially the triple option is bread and butter. If you can get the dive working, everything else works. And, and that's a big credit to the state defense for why Kentucky State's not really been able to get much going is they've played really well up front. Three touchdowns for Jake Chisholm. One touchdown for Kate Beam and the Flyers are rolling to what will end up being their second Victory of the season as we see. I believe that's Frank Trevino, the umpire, coming off the field with the Dayton medical staff, getting some fluids in him. It, it was warm. I was down on the turf earlier. It's, it's a nice day. I, I'm from northern Michigan, so this is <laughs> – I'm a, I'm a fall guy. This is not too warm for me personally, but – it, it was warm down there, so I imagine that a little bit of hydration issues. Looks like he's stretching out his neck a little bit. He's probably got some cramps. There's Stilski tripped up in the backfield. Nice play made there by the thoroughbreds defensively. Trevon Pope. You know, to go back to what you were talking about with Kentucky State, do you go for it? Do you kind of let it all hang out, so to speak? Like, Kentucky State, you just – Hopefully, coming into this game, trying to find a rhythm, get something going. Dayton should win the game if you look at the two teams on paper. Um, but you're also building for the rest of your season. you got conference play coming up. So you're trying to get something going, something you can build on. And then if you're Dayton, looks like your backup running back's doing pretty good. So you got a little bit of a maybe a little bit of a one-two punch coming up yeah. for, with Chisholm and Stilski. He's running pretty hard. If he can clean up his special teams mishap, uh, he'd have himself a pretty good day. Ten-yard run for Stilski on second and 12. Makes it third and two. I was going to say that, that math wasn't right, but it was. <laughs> I was looking at the field and I thought it was maybe closer to third and three, but that works. So you see the setup they got, they bring a beam in motion. That, that's the guy they usually would run behind. And There's Stilski with a massive hole, and he uses that block perfectly for a first down to the 15-yard line. And that's a nice job of bringing beam across in motion and having him kick out the end of the line. Connor Clyde, the right tackle for the Flyers, is able to seal his, off his guy. Stilski makes a nice read, picks up a big first down. That was Trayvon Pope again on the tackle. Two receivers out left for Dayton. Up by 29 and looking for more. Here's Stilski. And he's tripped up in the backfield. How about Trayvon Pope? He is he's played a doing really good it game all. today. He's been flying around up from that free safety, safety position. Uh, a lot of times he's been coming on the back side of plays, uh, stopping Cassiola as he's been uh, using the RPO. but. That time coming up on the front side, making a big stop, keeping this at second and ten. He's been playing really well. Second and ten from the 20. Two receivers each side. And a timeout is going to be taken here by the Dayton Flyers with 10.52 remaining in the game. This game, Jared, now just two hours old. We can take a look around the rest of the NCAA scoreboard in the top 25. We're nine, Kentucky beating Youngstown State 31. I believe that's 31 to nothing right now. Youngstown State, of course, beating the Flyers that you're watching right here on your screen. Georgia up 48-0 over South Carolina right now. Michigan up 52-0 over UConn. Baylor up 42-7 over Texas State and Oklahoma. Beating Nebraska, their interim head coach, 49-7 in the fourth quarter. As far as Pioneer League football is concerned, Dartmouth beating Valpo 21-10 and Princeton beating Stetson 29-14, both of those in the third quarter. 
not a ton of big name action around FBS football today. The big teams are playing, but just not against each other. Uh, probably similar to what you're seeing with Dayton here. Played a couple of hard games in the first couple of games. Give yourself a little bit, I don't want to say a lesser of an opponent, but hopefully a few good games before you get into the conference slate. Here's John Shiretti running the ball up the middle. Sophomore from New Philadelphia, Ohio. Shiretti, that's another, not, not a legacy like these other players in terms of father-son, but uh, his cousin was a really good offensive lineman finished just before John got here, Dominic Shreddy, uh, from the, the same area, went to St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Third down, Casilla stepping up, plenty of time, he'll take it himself, a flag is in on the play. He has enough for the first down if the play stands, but we'll have to wait and see why that yellow is on the field. The, it was thrown from the back judge, which usually indicates something in the backfield, or excuse me, in the in the defensive backfield. Holy defense number 21 at the distance, first down. That sets up a first and goal situation for the Flyers. And so that play, I think Cassiola got away with uh, lack of decision making, if you will. like. That's one he so far hasn't made the critical error in the red zone of taking a big sack or throwing a turning the ball over in some way. But on that one, got to know when to – now, he did a good job, obviously, getting first down yardage, those kind of things. But he's also got to have that mental clock of, okay, i got to make my decision quicker down here. I also need to be more deliberate with my decisions so that I don't have the critical error. That might be a trapped pass. It looked like that hit the turf. Rolling out, looking for Beam again. And again, we'll see. Here as the Flyers are at the five-yard line. Dayton yet to throw a touchdown to a wide receiver this year. Can they get it done here? We don't see Jake Chisholm on the field. It's still skiing there. I don't really think there's much reason to put Chisholm out there in a game like no, this he's right now. Done. He's probably done for the day. But you do have... Two of your taller wideouts out there on the near side is 87, Derek Willis. On the top side is 19, Jake Coleman. Here's Stilski with a run up the middle, staying on his feet. Tackle made there by Eldridge Dockery, the third, the senior from Chicago. It'll be inside the five-yard line now. And third down and three from the, or third down and goal, rather, from the three. Now you start to think about possibly some of those mesh routes, uh, maybe coming off of a motion towards the short side, just a quick little hitter, kind of like what they try to do two plays ago, slip and beam out there. Or you just say, hey, old lineman, let's pick up three yards here. Stilski, we're going to give you the ball. Get in. Stilski with a nice hole, spins through an arm tackle, and he's in for a touchdown. The third different touchdown scorer today for the Flyers. And Stilski, the red shirt freshman from Mason, Ohio, just down the road, pads that lead for the home team. Yeah, it's nice. He had a, he had a good drive, nice hard running. Just a nice job. Good play call there by Josh Hendershot. Uh, they, they've had success running the back side of, this of the formation. They picked up a first down earlier running off a, right off a beam and Clyde's block. This time they went to the left side. Nice job by the Flyer offense. Punching it in with Stilski getting his first touchdown of his collegiate career. A lot of commemorative footballs to be handed out today, Jerry. See, that's why you can't give them up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have enough balls. You got you to... <laughs> uh, 9 2 left in this game, 39-3. And Jared, 29 unanswered points now in this second half for the Flyers. What do you think, besides maybe Kentucky State being worn down, what do you think the biggest change has been offensively for Dayton in this second half as compared to the first half where at times they looked a little shaky? I think that they found their composure. They still have had some shaky plays in the second half, but they kept their composure and turn it into something. Because in the first half, some of those plays, I mean, look at the very first drive. Cassiola goes to do a, a pooch punt, and he flubs it off the end of his foot, gives them a short field. 
So in the second half, though, I mean, a couple of plays that have been broken plays, the, the third and 20 they picked up, the snap was at his feet, had to pick it up, goes running outside of, of the uh, end of line, finds Bubonic sitting downfield wide open. So they, they've done a good job of, and I would attribute that to leadership, being composed, making the plays that need to get played, kind of probably understanding, hey, we're not playing our best football, but that doesn't mean that we can't get it done. Yeah. So leadership's there. There's things that obviously need to get cleaned up, but that's that's after every game. you got to look through, okay, what do we do well? What do we do poorly? Let's we got to clean up what we did poorly because you're, you're playing for the PFL championship, uh, which you don't win when you're playing non-conference opponents. So um, I think that's been one of the bigger things. And the offensive line has kind of asserted themselves a little bit more in the second half, uh, which part of that is just understanding play call. Okay, can't really run up the middle. They're doing a good job plugging it up. So we got to figure out different ways to, to still stay true to who you are, which is running the ball north and south while still being able to blend into the flow of the game. And they've done a good job. I think you're likely to see both teams keep this ball on the ground a lot as the rest of this game goes along. That's Kendon Walker on the pitch. And you look at some local scores to local teams, I really should say. Cincinnati beating Miami of Ohio right now. Miami Oxford 31 to 17. That's in the fourth quarter down at Paycor Stadium. Local action. This is a, a rich area of the country for football. I mean, we already know Ohio high school football is one of the better states in the country, but you look at the number of colleges that play football in Ohio and how good they are. We talked earlier, Mount Union leads the yeah. country with uh, the shutout streak. Yep. They're an Ohio team. Obviously Dayton, Ohio team. Ohio State, Cincinnati, we know their, their success that they've had. Miami's been down a little bit, but that's the cradle of coaches. Yep. Like, Ohio football is on par with some of those other states. Obviously, you get into the debate over who's better, Ohio football, Pennsylvania with the Big 33, or, or Texas football, or California, or Florida. But there's no debate that they don't have one of the better hotbeds in the country as far as football, talent, knowledge, ability, all of those things. You look a little bit farther west today, Indiana trailing Western Kentucky right now with about seven and a half minutes left in that game. Pass over the middle of the field is incomplete again. Jonathan Jerry was looking for Kendon Walker, and if that's a bit of a better thrown ball, that might be six. You know, and he's had a couple like that where uh, Jerry's just missed, just by a little bit. And earlier it was McAllister on the top side of the screen trying to get a first down just missed him on that one like you just said that probably was sniffing the touchdown potentially it's going to end up being a foot race between Hildebrand and uh, Walker 39 to 3 728 left punting it away this ball a wobbly bounce at the 45 and it's picked up dangerous play there by Sam Bubonix and he's tackled right away uh, he was trying to get it off that first bounce. Almost came right to him at full speed. But nice job once he realized he was going to make contact with the ball, securing it, getting good field position for this Flyers offense. 7-17 remaining, and I don't know how much you're going to see Cassiola throw the football the rest of the way. In fact, I don't believe you're going to see him throw the ball at all. We're going to go to the backup quarterback here. Cole down the... Senior. Going to hand it off on first down, and what a run for John Sharetti. Hold down, the senior was one of four passing last season as a backup to Jack Cook. You know, Dayton had eight QBs listed on the roster entering this season, and they entered with just one combined completion. And that was that one last year from Cole. Yeah, they, they just graduated a, one of the better quarterbacks in program history, and Jack Cook. Didn't Not leave to. a whole lot of room for other guys <laughs> to play. John Shreddy stacked up in the backfield. Uh -oh. He's a little slow to get up. 
I already got the wind knocked out. Or a stinger. He's kind of shaking his shoulder a little bit. Yeah, you were talking last drive. You know, is it the Dayton offense clicking? Is it Kentucky State giving up a little bit? Based off the first play on this drive, where Shreddy rumbled off about 12, I thought, hey, maybe Kentucky State's kind of giving up a little bit, which is starting to kind of maybe see that a little bit now. The, the game is very much out of hand. You're down under six minutes. Big chunk plays out of some of these uh, reserve players for Dayton. And pretty much put it on ice. Trying to get some of these guys some action. Also, you want to make sure that the main guys on your two deep aren't getting hurt at this stage in the game when you're up by 36 points. Third down and four yards to go. All spotted at the 38 yard line. So this is one of those games that, this is kind of what you hope this game would be. Yep. Again, I've said it multiple times, probably tired of hearing me say it, but played two Tough opponents in your first game. You end up with a, a, a game that should be a win going into it. So as a coaching staff, you're hoping, okay, hopefully we just go out there, do what we do, take care of business so that we can get in some of our younger players, get them on the field, kind of get rid of some of the jitters so that when we go to throw them in later in the year when we need them, need them, then we don't have any of those, oh, first time I've touched the ball, first time I've done this. Yeah, you get rid of that. And then it's just football at that point. Because you got to remember, some of these guys – come in, Dayton program has a history of uh, freshmen coming in, end up redshirting, so it's been a couple years since they've played meaningful uh, minutes. And Logan Davis was there on first down, and there again on second down on the carry up to the 30-yard line, and, or rather to the 31-yard line to pick up a three. Well, you can see, too, they're on their third or fourth running back here, and just as hard, just as quick. Like Dayton's got a pretty loaded running backs room. Haven't really seen it as much. We've just talked about it, but they're really deep in the receiver room as well. And off going up the middle again, and this should be enough to push the pile for a first down. It will be Logan Davis from Prospect, Kentucky, out of St. X, the redshirt freshman. Getting some good action here late in the game. You got to say Louisville St. X. Louisville St. X, uh, yes, good <laughs> clarification there. Louisville St. X, not Cincinnati St. X, who nearly pulled off the stunner last night against Moeller in a star-studded crowd there at that game down at Cincinnati St. X. I don't know if you saw any of that, Jared. I did not, it but I do know that the Dayton Flyers are no stranger to the GCL South. <laughs> GCL South. You got representatives from each of those four teams, plus Louisville St. X. Here's a run up the middle, slicing his way toward the end zone, staying on his feet, and a touchdown. Another one for the Flyers. Logan Davis in for the score. You can just see how deep this running back's room is. Doesn't matter who they put in there. There's not a drop off. Great job by Davis. Great job by this whole line. Opening a little bit of a crease. You see a little bit of a, a guard pull there. One of the backup guards, Jackson Ward, uh, out of Walnut Hills in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, tight end Austin Bradfish coming across, getting a good kickout block, and then Davis did the rest. Nice job by this Flyers offense, just keeping it rolling. Extra point tacked on, and Dayton has blown it open. Here in this second half, it is 46 to three. Dayton with 327 left in the game, but yeah, it was, you looked at that Moeller and St. X game last night, you look at the talent that was on the field, but in the crowd, Luke Fickle, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats, Zach Taylor, the Bengals head coach, Joey Votto, Tyler Stevenson, Cincinnati Reds were there. The whole Bengals running back room was there. And you look at, the talent that was on the field. Muller's running back is a guy that not only is going to play high-level college football, he'll probably play at the NFL level. He'll be playing on Sundays someday, I'll say it. He's very talented. And you look around this roster for Dayton, you look at the GCL talent, the GCL South talent especially, that is on this roster. A lot of Cincinnati area recruits on this Dayton roster, as you talked about earlier in the game, Jared. And uh, it, when you have that kind of talent, just less than an hour south of you, there is 
no reason to let it go to waste. No, and Dayton's been no stranger. The one that we've recruited more than others recently has been St. X since I've been here. Uh, but recently they've they've found a little bit of a uh, gold mine, not gold mine, but a vein of gold in, in LaSalle recruits as well. Had a few of those last few years that have been really good for them. Uh, some Moeller guys. Actually, the one school that they don't really recruit, I shouldn't say they don't recruit as much, but haven't had as many guys from has been Cincinnati Elder. Yep. Uh, but you look back a few years ago, one of the quarterbacks when I got here was a two-time state champion at Elder, uh, Rob Florian. So it, it's a rich history of GCL South guys coming to date and making an impact and definitely talking about it. So the, the conversations that you'll hear tomorrow will be with the between the X and the Molar guys. <laughs> like, oh, man, we almost got you. Or, oh, yeah. No doubt. They, they set it aside, though, obviously, because <laughs> everybody's wearing red here. But they definitely, in those down times, they definitely talk about it. The run to the outside by Kendon Walker. And Kendon Walker has had to shoulder some more duties here in this second half, but just really hasn't had all that much success in this third and fourth quarter. No, and, and you can see Dayton got some fresher legs in there, putting in some of their reserves on defense. That was uh, the safety, Logan Miller, redshirt freshman out of, from Bishop, Bishop Fenwick uh, in Lebanon, Ohio, coming up, making a big tackle. Uh, you can see on the defensive line, they got some some of the younger guys in. Speaking of Moeller, on the near side of the screen, the, that DN, 69. Uh, Chase Brown is a DN out of Moeller. Far run to the outside, trying to cut the edge. A first down and more. That goes across midfield. A really nice run on a long second down opportunity for the Thoroughbreds. And that goes for a big pickup for Jaden Hale. And that was, I mean, you can see the speed that they have. And, and that, to me, you see this play and you go, okay, give more credit to the Dayton defense earlier in the game because they kept it corralled. You can see how explosive that this Kentucky State team is once they get to the outside. Dayton just did a good job of taking away up the middle, taking away some of their bread and butter plays and forcing them into long yardage situations, which takes them off script and, and makes it harder for Kentucky State to convert. First down run goes for no gain, and we're at the two-minute mark here. The timeout taken by Kentucky State with 1.59 to go. So after the first half, Jared, where Kentucky State used all three timeouts with just over 11 minutes left in the second quarter, now with less than two minutes left in a 43-point game, we see Kentucky State take their first timeout of the second half. Uh, you also have to consider, too, in the – First half, game is a little closer. You're making some of those decisions because you're still in the game. A little bit different when you're down <laughs> multiple yeah. scores. So, hey, let the clock run. For, for Kentucky State, just try to build on it. So that last play, uh, long play that they had by Hale. Okay, build off that. Let's try to find some positives. Um, I haven't paid as close of attention to see if Kentucky State's been putting in some of their reserves, but a lot of times the travel roster, you don't really bring some of your younger players. You, you pretty much only travel your two deep. But looking at Dayton, some definitely some stuff to, to be proud of, to look back and say, all right, hey, we played really well here, and definitely some stuff to clean up. Uh, defense played really well today. Uh, you, you're playing a triple option team. That, that's a tough matchup, period. Uh, tough physically, but also tough mentally. Nice job by them, just staying locked in, doing what they need to do. Almost pitched a shutout, getting getting out of here, hopefully holding Kentucky State to just three points. That, that's a nice job by this Dayton defense. Now you're under two minutes to play, and you have a bye week next week before you're right back here at home on the 1st of October against Drake to start PFL action. Four home games remaining. If you, Weren't able to make it out to Welcome Stadium today. Of course, Welcome Stadium undergoing all those renovations that they're expected to finish here in the next year or so. New track, as you can see, around the outside. They haven't laid the lines for it yet, but the asphalt is down and laid the lines for the track coming soon. There's rolling out for a pass and instead just keeping it himself. And oh, what a tackle made 
there for Dayton. That was Aiden McKinley, Louisville Trinity. But the welcome stadium renovations, a new paint job. Renovations not done yet. As you can see on the far side of the field, half of those bleachers don't over there don't even have bleachers. It's just steps. We, we talked about on offense how deep some of the, the running back room, the receivers room is, but you look on this defense, that linebacker room is pretty deep as well. As you see McKinley flying up, making a big tackle. Um, Dayton, rich, rich history of, of great linebacker play too. Goes all the way back to the 70s with the head man himself, Rick Chamberlain. <laughs> Rick Chamberlain. You know, he, he's an All-American linebacker, but she, just in the short time that I've been here, I, I've got, been able to watch some really, really good linebackers play um, for this Flyers program. And, and this year is they're right, right back to it. I mean, that, that's what makes this Dayton defense go is D-line playing very solid gap sound, letting the linebackers run around, make plays. And then in the back end, don't give up the big one. Uh, obviously make plays on the ball, which they did, and, and capitalize on mistakes. But, but this linebacker unit is usually a good indication of how good the defense is going to be. So with 23 seconds left in the game, trailing by 43, Kentucky State takes another timeout. This game, Jared, is going to be under two and a half hours. It's uh, just an unreal game time for a college football game. You're looking at a Dayton team that averages somewhere in the range of 310, 315 for game times. Yep, it's it's uh, <laughs> you're looking at like 229 right here. A lot, a lot different than uh, than a standard. You're not going to see this type of game. Come, Absolutely come not. Two weeks from now no. against Drake, you're going to see a little more, not more of a slugfest, but you're going to see a little bit more passing, stoppage, those kind of things. It's going to look a little more normal. But when you're playing a run first team, run heavy team, that's what you're going to see. Going for it on fourth down, a shot down the right side of the field falls incomplete. Dayton will just have to. Take a knee, and that'll be the end of the game. And speaking of shots, Jerry took a big shot as he released that from uh, Hirschfield, number 34, one of the linebackers for this Flyers team. And Dayton didn't start out as clean as maybe you would <laughs> like, but they, they settled in, got it done. Big, big second half from the offense, but defense played well the entire day. Really really kept Kentucky State from getting anything going. They had a couple of drives in the first half that found some success, and that was about it. But the rest of the way has been the Dayton defense shutting the door, and then the offense obviously finding some success. Still some things to clean up, a lot to look at and say, hey, we did this pretty well, but definitely going to need to make good use of this bye week. You got some guys that are a little banged up. Talked about Smith, talked about a couple others that – Having another week without having a game, hopefully you get some of these guys a little healthier going into the, the conference slate. Definitely make good use of your film study, clean up what you need to clean up, and get ready to hopefully try to win another championship. Ryan Van Shelvin, the senior quarterback, takes a knee, and that'll do it for here from Welcome Stadium. And take a look at the huge day for Jake Chisholm, a three-touchdown day for Jake Chisholm and the Dayton Flyers. They win it big by 43, Jared. Dayton just pouring it on in the second half offensively and a lot to look forward to for this Flyers unit. I think they can have another championship type season. So for Jared Phillips here in the booth for Scott Helton, our producer today in front of 2,682 people here from Welcome Stadium in Dayton, Ohio. I'm Paul Fritschner signing off. We'll be back on the air on Saturday, October 1st to end or to begin PFL action. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.